Hey guys, here are all of the books that I read in June. So in the month of June, I was doing the Rainbow TBR challenge where I had to pick six books based on the six main colors of the rainbow, and the challenge was to read as many as I can. I actually completed four of these six books that I chose, and while I do wish that I could have completed all of them, I am pretty pleased with myself that I was even able to complete four. So I completed Snow by Tracy Lind, which is a retelling of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. This book was pretty interesting. I mean, it did differ quite a bit from the original story, which, you know, it's a retelling, so I didn't expect it not to. I thought it was very funny how instead of the seven dwarves, there were these human-animal hybrids, and it was kind of weird, but I didn't dislike it. I actually kind of liked them. They were called the Lonely Ones. Yeah, the Lonely Ones. Instead of Snow being a princess, she was the daughter of a duke, and her name was Jessica. I don't know why I find that so weird. I just, I just do. It's just kind of weird. There was an evil stepmother and I actually felt like I was reading a fairy tale when I was reading this and I liked that. I ended up rating this three out of five stars on Goodreads. I actually forgot to introduce book number three, so here it is. Um, Prince of Shadows by Rachel Kane. And this is a, it's basically Romeo and Juliet, except it is told from the point of view of Benvolio. It portrays a romance between Benvolio and Rosalind. I really enjoyed this. I thought it was very beautifully written, and there are so many beautiful lines in this book. I loved the romance between Benvolio and Rosalind. I thought it was very sweet. And for me, this could have easily been a five-star read. But, mm -mm. <sighs> Mercutio, okay? I did not like Mercutio at all. I feel like this book had way too much Mercutio. And it's just, he did some, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but he just did some really stupid and reckless things and oh my gosh, it made me so upset. I hated Mercutio in this book. I just wished that they would just stop talking about him, that he would just go away forever and not come back. I just, I did not like Mercutio in this book. But yeah, I rated this book four to five stars on Goodreads. It could have been a five-star read, but there was just too much Mercutio for my liking. Next, I have Orchards by Holly Thompson, which is about a girl named Kana who goes to live with her mother's family in Japan after one of her classmates commits suicide. So throughout the story, Kana's trying to process her feelings and the guilt that she's feeling because although she wasn't the bully, she kind of just stood by and didn't do anything to stop what was happening. This wasn't really a heavily emotional story, even though there were some pretty sad moments. It's kind of a sweet and warm story without minimizing the situation because throughout the whole story, Kana is dealing with her demons and she is obviously tormented by the decisions that she's made. So yeah, I rated this book four to five stars on Goodreads and I do recommend it. I really like this writing style. Next I have The Girl on the Cliff by Lucinda Riley and this is a contemporary historical fiction novel. This story is about a woman named Grenya who returns to her family in Ireland after a recent heartbreak in New York. Here in Ireland, Grenya meets a little girl named Aurora who she becomes very close to despite her mother's warnings against it. But Grenya will soon discover how deeply she and Aurora's family histories are entwined and all the reasons why Grenya's mother doesn't want her to have anything to do with Aurora's family. This actually feels like multiple stories in one because not only is it Grania's story and Aurora's story, but when we go into the past and we get to see things from their ancestors' perspectives, we just see their stories and there's just so many different aspects to the story. You kind of wonder how everything's going to fit together and it pretty much fit together perfectly. Honestly, the moments in the past were my favorite parts and the story was just so well written. I definitely looking forward to reading more of Lucinda Riley's work. Yeah, this is pretty good. Um, there were some pretty heartbreaking moments in the story. I mean, moments that had me near tears, moments that had me in tears. The only bits that I probably didn't enjoy was when they would go to Grenya's fiance in New York. I didn't really care for those moments, but um, I th thought everything else was good. Yeah, I rated this one four out of five stars on Goodreads, and I really love how atmospheric this cover is. I love this cover. So the only books that I didn't read from the Rainbow TBR Challenge are Outrun the Moon by Stacey Lee and Devoted by Jennifer Matthew. I will read these sometime soon because I am interested in reading this. I actually started Outrun the Moon. I'm not very far into it. I think I'm like 30 pages in, and it's interesting so far. I just, you know, had to take a break because I'm working on a new TBR pile, and... Oh gosh, there's just so much happening and the booktubeathon is coming up really soon and 
I just have so much going on, but I'm going to get back to this because I really want to read this book. I was really excited for this when it came out, and I got to get through it. And this one, yeah, I'll get to him at some point, but you can't really see him. He's really pretty, actually. If you could see all the colors. Yep, there we go. It's really pretty. I also read The Hunger Games and Catching Fire by Suzanne Collins. These were so stinking good. I loved them so much. I rated both of them five out of five stars in Goodreads. I just, I can't believe that I've had these sitting on my shelves for years and haven't read them until now. They were amazing. I mean, these books are gold. I love Katniss, I love Peeta, I still don't care for Gale, I didn't care for him in the movies either, but you know, I just, I love these so much. They were so enjoyable and just fun to read. I can definitely see how they differentiate from the movies. I still love the movies but the books are definitely better. I can't wait to read Mockingjay. Maybe I'll try to knock that one out during the Booktubeathon week. I don't know, we'll see. But yeah, I definitely have to try to finish this series because it is so good. So I listened to four audiobooks in the month of June and the first one was The Life We Bury by Alan S. Eh, eh, es okay, Alan Eskins. Alan Eskins. Alan Eskins. This story is about a college student named Joe Talbert who is given an English class assignment to write a brief biography on a stranger. With his deadline quickly approaching, Joe decides to visit a nearby nursing home where he meets Carl Iverson, a dying Vietnam veteran and a convicted murderer. Carl has only a few months to live, and so he was paroled to a nursing home after spending 30 years in prison for the rape and murder of a young girl. As Joe learns about Carl's life, he's having a hard time figuring out how someone like Carl could have been the man that murdered that young girl all those years ago. So he takes it upon himself to uncover the truth, throwing himself down a very dangerous path. It's supposed to be a thriller slash mystery novel. I pretty much saw everything coming. I mean, it was interesting. Overall, the story was pretty jacked up. There was sexual content in it and it made me feel very uncomfortable. There were some pretty sickening rape situations in the story and yeah, it made me feel pretty uncomfortable. I rated this book three out of five stars on Goodreads. Would not read that again. Next I read When by Victoria Lowry, which is about a teenage girl who can see death dates. I enjoyed this story. I thought it was pretty interesting. Um, it was kind of jacked up, you know, with her being able to see people's death dates and all. And oh my gosh, you guys, this book has one of the sweetest dedications I have ever seen. She says, for Brian, may my own date come many years from now, exactly one day before yours. <laughs> that is so sweet. But yeah, I rated this one four out of five stars on Goodreads. The last two books that I read were The Wretched of Mirrorwood and The Blight of Mirrorwood by Jeff Wheeler. Here's the description for The Wretched of Mirrorwood. In the ancient and mystical land of Mirrorwood, Leah has known only a life of servitude. Labeled as a wretched, an outcast, unwanted, and unworthy of respect, Leah is forbidden to realize her dream to read and write. All but doomed, her days are spent toiling away as a kitchen slave under the charge of the Aldermaston, the Abbey's watchful overseer. But when an injured squire named Colvin is abandoned at the kitchen's doorstep, an opportunity arises. The nefarious Sheriff Almagir soon starts a manhunt for Colvin, and Leah conspires to hide Colvin and change her fate. In the midst of a land torn by a treacherous war between a ruthless king and a rebel army, Leah finds herself on an ominous journey that will push her to wonder if her own hidden magic is enough to set things right. The Rush of Mirrorwood and The Blight of Mirrorwood are the first two books in a trilogy, and I really enjoyed them. I rated both books four out of five stars, and I just thought it was a really fascinating story. I liked the idea of the medium. The medium is basically kind of like a magical power source. The medium isn't something that anyone can control. It's something that you have to allow yourself to be controlled by. And I thought that was really interesting, because the medium isn't so much a bad thing. Um, if the medium wills you to rescue someone, then you have to allow yourself to do it. Um, otherwise, there might be consequences. Uh, something, it's something along those lines. I'm just trying to give you guys an example of how the medium works. But um, I actually really liked the idea of the medium. I really enjoyed this world. And these are really, really clean. Like, there was no language or anything, and I appreciated that. I liked that, and I liked Jeff Wheeler's writing. So I'm looking forward to reading more of his work. So those were all the books that I read in the month of June. I'm going to try to edit this video down as much as possible so that it's not too lengthy. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. See you guys next time. <laughs>